Hello and welcome to our second Live at Lunch session of 2021. We started these sessions during Pension Awareness Week in 2020 and we were overwhelmed in a good way, of course, with how many of you wanted to join us to learn about your pensions. So we decided to give you people what you wanted and give you some more sessions. It's great to have you here. Um, if you're a newcomer, a big warm welcome to you and we hope you, you'll value your time with us today. If you're coming back for more, well, good for you. Uh, after You do value pension, so after all, it is the uh, second biggest benefit you get after pay. We appreciate that giving up lunch isn't easy, and if you're anything like me, you've got a salad and a packet of crisps just waiting for five past one. So I hope you'll get something out of it today and you'll feel like it's been worthwhile spending your time with us. Today, we're going to be talking about pensions in a pandemic. It's a delicate subject, one that has affected a lot of us over the last year. A little bit of housekeeping just before we get started. Um, do make sure that you've got a pen, paper, a digital device, a cup of tea, coffee, a glass of water, or maybe a couple of cho chocolate biscuits with you, because we are here for 45 minutes. We'd like you to take away three things that you can do after today. Firstly, we'd like you to visit the scheme website. The link is just below. However, it is also www.civilservicepensionscheme.org.uk. On the website, you can find lots of helpful and useful information. Uh, you can find guides, you can find rules, all sorts of information. It's not too complicated either. We'd also like you to register, or if you already have registered, visit the pension portal. It's a really useful tool. You can track all your personal details in there. You can look at your annual benefit statement on there as well. You can change death benefit information. We'd also like you to use our retirement modeler. Um, this can help you see what your pension could look like when you come to retire, and it will help you sort of plan for your, um, for your retirement as well. So it's a really useful tool to use. So one of the things that um, really has struck us over the last few years is how important a pension is. Um, as part of your total reward package, it offers you so much death benefit nominations, as I've already mentioned. It also offers inflation proof cover as the years go by. So it means that it does keep on growing. It's also guaranteed by the government. So it is a really, really important benefit as part of your total reward package. It's important that you think about your pension from the very moment that you start your career in the middle and towards the end of it as well. Now, if you're anything like us, you'll be thinking about it every day, but we know that's probably not realistic for some people. So if you think about it a few times a year, that's great. And you keep planning for your retirement. So like I say, if you visit the scheme website, you can find lots of information on there and that will help you plan for your retirement. Now, today we're going to be watching a video, obviously, on our subject about pensions in a pandemic. And then we'll be having a live Q&A afterwards. The video will be put up on our website afterwards, so don't feel like you have to sit there and take notes because you can then watch it back at your leisure. So it'll be online within the next one to two weeks. We're also recording this session today as well. So again, if you do miss something or you want to make some notes afterwards, you can do. Again, it will be about one to two weeks and it'll be on the Scheme website, so do keep an eye out for it there. Welcome to the Civil Service Pension Scheme. Since the coronavirus outbreak in 2020, there have been many changes to our working and personal lives. Of course, it's not just the pandemic that may have caused a change to your working circumstances. You may have previously reduced your working hours to care for loved ones. If this is the case, you may be wondering how these changes may have affected your civil service pension. In this video, we'll explore the impact of the pandemic on both the defined benefit and defined contribution schemes that make up the civil service pension arrangements. A defined contribution pension scheme provides benefits to members on retirement based on the amount of money they have paid into the scheme and investment returns. There are currently three defined contribution schemes as part of the civil service pension arrangements. Civil Service Additional Voluntary Scheme, CSA, VCS, the Partnership Pension Account, the Concord Pension Account. For more information about our defined contribution schemes, please visit the dedicated page on the scheme website, www.civilservicepensionscheme.org.uk forward slash members forward slash defined contributions. If you are a member of one of our defined contribution schemes, your contributions are invested by the scheme's provider in one of their funds. 
the value of your defined contribution pension will depend on how much money is invested in your fund and how well it performs in the stock market. The provider of all the civil service pensions defined contribution schemes is legal in general. Since the coronavirus outbreak, there has been some volatility in the stock market. You may therefore be worried about the value of your DC pension, which means you need to be more engaged with how your fund is performing. DC pensions should be seen as a long-term investment, and although not guaranteed, values can go up over time. Legal in general offers several different investment funds which offer various levels of risk. They also provide tools to keep you engaged with your pension, including a dedicated portal and app. Making your decisions about your pension based on short-term events and circumstances can have long-term consequences for your retirement financial well-being. You may wish to speak to the scheme provider or seek independent financial advice before making any decisions about your DC pension. You can find the contact details for your defined contribution schemes provider here www.civilservicepensionscheme.org.uk forward slash contact hyphen us. If you'd like to speak to an independent financial advisor, the Financial Conduct Authorities website contains a list. www.fca.org.uk forward slash consumers forward slash finding advisor. The Civil Service Pensions Defined Benefit Schemes are Classic 1972 to 2002 Classic Plus 2002 Only Classic members could move into this Premium 2002 to 2007 Nuvos 2007 to 2015 Alpha 2015 In a Defined Benefit Scheme the benefits you receive at retirement is determined by a set calculation based on your earnings and your length of membership in the scheme. Although your DB scheme is not at risk from investments going up or down, it could be impacted if you have had to go part-time or take any unpaid absence as a result of the pandemic. If you are a member of one of those final salary schemes, Classic, Classic Plus or Premium, and you have gone part-time, the service accrued while part-time will be prorated to reflect the amount of hours you have worked. Any full-time service you accrued will not be impacted by your part-time service. If you work part-time when you come to retire, the pensionable earnings used to calculate your pension is based on your full-time equivalent. For example, Raj joined on the 1st of June 1990 in the Classic Scheme. From the 1st of April 2020, he reduced his hours to 25 hours per week until he retired on the 31st of December 2021 with a pensionable pay of £35,000. Here's his service breakdown. From the 1st of June 1990 to the 31st of March 2020 equals 29 years and 304 days. From the 1st of April 2020 to the 31st of December 2021 at 25 hours per week equals 1 year 275 days times 25 hours divided by 37 hours equals 1 year and 68 days. Which gives total reckonable service of 29 years, 304 days plus 1 year and 68 days equals 31 years and 7 days pension. So, his total pension for 31 years, 7 days times £35,000, divided by 80, equals £13,570.90 per year. And a lump sum of 3 times £13,570.90 equals £40,712.70. Alpha and Nuvos are both career average pension schemes. This means you build up a pension based on a percentage of how much you earn each scheme year. A scheme year runs from the 1st of April to the 31st of March. Alpha has a build up rate of 2.32% of your actual pensionable earnings from each scheme year. 
Nuvos has a build-up rate of 2.3% of your actual pensionable earnings from each scheme year. If you are a member of Alpha or Nuvos, your pension benefits are based on what you earn in a scheme year. Therefore, if you go part-time, there will be no effect on any pension you have already accrued. But if you have reduced your earnings, any pension built up after going part-time will be based on your part-time earnings. For example, Francis joined the Alpha Pension Scheme on the 1st of April 2017, with a salary of £27,000, earning a pension of £626.40 per annum, 27,000 times 2.32%. Up to the 31st of March 2020, Francis has remained on this salary over this period and accrued a pension of £1,879.20 per annum. From the 1st of April 2020, Francis went part-time, working 20 hours per week. Over the next year, she earned a pension of £338.59, £27,000 times 20 hours divided by 37 hours, taking her total pension to £2,217.79 per annum. Unpaid absences will also impact on your pension. As you have not been paid, you will not accrue pension whilst on an unpaid absence. Examples of unpaid absences are unpaid sick leave, career break, unpaid special leave. Chloe joined the Alpha Pension Scheme on the 1st of April 2017 with a salary of £27,000, earning a pension of £626.40 per annum, £27,000 times 2.32%. Up to the 31st of March 2020, Chloe has remained on the same salary over this period and accrued a pension of £1,879.20 per annum. From the 1st of April 2020, Chloe has six months of unpaid leave. This meant that up to the 31st of March 2021, Chloe earned a pension of £313.20 per annum, 13,500 times 2.32%, taking her total pension to £2,192.40 per annum. As Chloe had a period of unpaid leave in this scheme year, the pension in this year will be based on what she has earned. If someone goes on to half sick pay, then the full time equivalent is used. This is known as assumed pay. If you have been working part time or had unpaid absences, you may be interested in finding a way of increasing the pension you have accrued. There are a couple of ways you can do this. These are added pension, Increase your main scheme pension either by making additional monthly contributions or making a lump sum payment. CSAVCs are an ability for you to save for an additional amount of pension in our DC scheme, allowing you to have some more involvement in how your pension is made up, all whilst having the safety net of your main scheme pension. If in doubt, check the web www.civilservicepensionscheme.com .org.uk Well, I hope you found that really useful. I did say it was a short video. It was a little bit longer than, uh, than I sort of said. So um, you can watch it back again as well. If you did miss any of that, it will be available on the Scheme website shortly afterwards. Um, finally, just before I introduce you to today's panel experts, um, I just want to say again, please do visit the Scheme website. If you've got any questions, if, you, if you're a bit anxious or you've got anything that you're worried about with your pension, you, con you can contact the Scheme Administrator. Their details can be found on the Scheme website under Contact Us. Uh, you can also find some really helpful information on there as well, handy tips and tricks as well. So please do give it a visit. So today's panel is made up of Andy Jones, who is an engagement manager within Cabinet Office, and Scylla Christmas, who is a valuation and strategic review manager within Cabinet Office. Both of these people know are quite a lot about pensions, and they also have a vested interest in today's session as well. So uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, posting your questions to them. 
you can you can submit your questions obviously as a lot of you already have done through the uh, the back end system you can also upvote questions as well so if you're thinking about a question and you can see it's already been asked it would be really helpful if you upvote that one that's already been asked first because we will be answering the most popular ones first so i'm going to kick off today's session with a question to Scylla. Uh, now Scylla, I am a carer for my daughter who's aged 20 but with no prospect of being able to work. Can I put her name down to receive my pension for life when I die? Thanks Nigel and this one's of particular interest to me. I think you know I'm a pensions geek, I love helping people understand their pensions but I'm also chair of the Civil Service Carers Network or co-chair so um, I'm very interested in helping carers through as well. So thank you for raising this, I know a lot of parents will be interested in this one. If your daughter, you think she's not going to be able medically to look after herself going forward and will not be able to be independent and will need support, there is Put the possibility of having her as a uh, or having her receive a beneficiary pension after you die. It does depend on the, the, your circumstances and also your pension scheme. So please do contact my CSP, explain the position. They'll check against your pension scheme and explain what is possible and how you can make the most of that and what you need to do. So please reach out to my CSP and they'll be able to help you with that. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks. Thanks, Silla. That's really useful. And being a pensions geek is uh, its not a bad thing. It's a great thing, actually, especially um, the, uh, the roles that we're doing as well. So uh, I'm going to go next. I'm going to come to Andy on this one. Um, Andy, I was in Classic Plus and I've accrued a large death benefit payment. If I don't die in service, will I get any of this money back? Cheers, Nigel. Uh Classic Plus, wow, unicorn. Um, I often refer to individuals who are in uh, Classic Plus uh, as being a unicorn uh, because they are the smallest uh, scheme membership we have. Um, with Classic Plus, would you get any of the death lump sum back if you've not nominated anyone? Uh, essentially, no, you won't. Um, that is a benefit for a person who is... Like I say, is nominated. If you've not nominated anyone, a payment will go to your estate upon your death. I mean, what you could be um, referencing is around WPS contributions, maybe uh, prior to uh, the 30th of September 2002. There would be a refund of WPS contributions due to you had you remained uh, single or through that period and remain single up until you retire. But if it's solely about death benefit nominations, if you don't nominate an individual, your payment or the death lump sum um, would go to your estate. Brilliant, thanks Andy. Hopefully that's, uh, that's helped clear that one up. Uh, we're gonna have some polls today as well. We'd really like to get your feedback on some areas. Um, it will help us shape things that we do. So the first poll is gonna come up shortly um, and we're gonna be asking you, are you considering changing your working pattern in the next one to three or three to five years? If you could fill that in, that'd be really helpful to us. Okay, so the next question, um, this is a great one. And I think obviously there's a lot of you who are sort of thinking about this because it's been upvoted quite a bit. Can you advise implications of partial retirement on future pension? Silo, I'm going to come to you. OK, so um, partial retirement generally means that you need to have um, reduced your working hours or your pay by at least 20 percent in order to access partial retirement. And uh, so as, as the video showed, Obviously, future service, future accrual in your pension is depending on your earnings as well as the time you spend in the pension scheme. So the, the pay you are actually getting while you continue to work will therefore be lower. So the amount you accrue each year is going to be lower. So you have to think about the amount you're earning going forward will be less in your pension, that is, than the amount um, you're, you, know, you were accruing before. So when you think about what you can afford to do and what you're looking at do go on to our model and think about what that future accrual might look like um, and whether that overall fits with your retirement plans and needs the amount of money you'll need for right until you know right through your retirement into your 80s and potentially 90s hopefully yes hope so Silla. thank you for that uh right Andy, I'm going to come back to you. I'm playing a little bit of tennis between you two. So this is great, uh, great volleys between you both. Andy, 
I'm in both classic and alpha. When I turn 60, can I take a lump sum for my alpha account? It's a great question. Yeah, great question. Um, what you would need to do to get access to your um, classic pension is actually do a form of retirement action. So uh, Scylla just um, described partial retirement. So you would have to take some kind of retirement action to get access to your pension. Uh, what you can do uh, if you wanted to partially retire age 60, uh, you can bring just your um, classic pension or pre-alpha pension into payment and leave your alpha pension until you actually uh, want to fully retire. Or if you wanted to, you can bring everything into payment all at once. That's entirely up to you. Um, and or if you wanted to fully retire uh, instead of just partially retiring, then you would um, you have that same choice. You know, so you can take everything you've accrued. So both classic and alpha with the alpha being um, reduced uh, or you can just take your classic benefits, leave your alpha until a later date, uh, which is entirely up to you. Brilliant. Thanks, Andy. Really helpful. Uh, right. I'm going to stick with you now, Andy. Andy, can you outline the process and timescale for taking retirement? Yeah, sure. So what we usually ask is around about four months uh, for retirement processes to take place. Now, four months, it seems like a long time uh, and and it is. But what that allows uh, the administrator to do is a look across your um, service. People might have moved from across different departments. For, for example, myself, I worked in the Ministry of Defence, moved through to um, DWP for a short period of time, and now I'm in, I'm in the Cabinet Office. So three different employers, three different payrolls. Things could have gone awry with the data that is supplied from my employer. So what my CSP does, who is a scheme administrator, is go through your record, make sure all the data that is holding is correct, and then provides you with a accurate um, quotation of what your pension is when you come to retire. So they'll post it out to you uh, for you to go over the figures that you'll be receiving. Uh, within there will be necessary forms complete, which will provide like bank account details, uh, details for any other pensions you may have put into payment, all things like that. And then the, the choices you may want to make on how you take your benefits. That is returned. My CSP then set up the payment of your pension. And what usually happen then when your pension is due for payment, uh, if you choose to go for a lump sum, that'll be paid the day after you're, you've retired. Uh, and your pension would usually start around about a month after uh, you've retired as well. Brilliant. Thanks, Andy. Thanks very much for that. So interesting results coming in through the poll. Um, we asked, are you considering changing your working pattern in the next year? 23% of you said yes. The one next uh, one was one to three years and 38% of you said yes. Uh, three to five years, 39%. So um, that's quite, it's quite an interesting split, really. So there are quite a few out there of you out there who are thinking about doing this. So, yeah, thanks for that information. Right, next question. Um, and this is quite a popular one. It's been upvoted quite a few times, uh, almost 130 times. Scylla, is there a better time of year to retire in relation to pension and lump sum and tax? Oh, this was a nice one. Thank you for that one, Nigel. <laughs> I would say in my experience, no, because ultimately the how um, the impact of your pension is about what it means for you and your circumstances. So what you need to think about is what do you need for your life? Why are you looking to retire when you're looking to retire? So when can you make the decision? How much notice have you got? And then what are you going to get? And how does that tie in and provide for your circumstances if you have specific and complicated tax situation such as other income you know foreign income etc there may be some timing issues but it's not something I can comment on as a pension specialist what I would say is if you have that sort of tax situation you are most likely to have a specialist tax advisor or an accountant in support of you anyway go and talk to them about what it means for your tax from taking your pension. But from a pension perspective, no, there isn't a particularly good time of year to do it. Thanks, Scylla. I mean, if I was going to wade in on that, I would say uh, retiring in spring would be the best time because then you've got summer and autumn ahead of you as well. So there you are, it's just my personal view on retirement. Right. Um, 
And then when it comes to you, how do you calculate the value of your pension part? Great question. Uh, so this is probably referring to what's called the lifetime allowance. Uh, the way the lifetime allowance works, it looks at the that creates what's the the total of your value of your pension is for tax purposes. Uh, so the way that is worked out, it all depends on the amount of pension you are bringing in. That is then multiplied by a factor of 20. And then added on top of that is any tax fee lump sum you're receiving as well. Um, and that creates what's called the lifetime allowance value. Um, the reason the lifetime allowance uh, value is important is a limit set by HMRC, which um, says about the, the overall value of your pension pot can be before additional tax is paid. Um, the current limit is 1,073,000 off the top of my head. Um, so it's, it's quite high and it's high earners who would be impacted by this. Um, People who need to consider about the lifetime allowances, like I say, people who, who generally earn over uh, £100,000 would be at risk of, of this. Um, also, people with pensions elsewhere um, and people who are also saving towards uh, extra re retirement income. Um, if you are at risk of breaching the lifetime allowance, one thing I would recommend to do is have a look on the scheme website. We do have dedicated pages around um the two main issues and two main tax topics should i say not issues uh which are both annual allowance and the lifetime allowance uh go on the scheme website have a read over the information lots of detail in there about what you can do to understand your position as well as researching any protections especially for the lifetime allowance which may be applicable to you Brilliant. Thanks, Andy. Really helpful. Uh, we've got another poll question for you now. Uh, it's probably more um, less polling, uh, more information for us. Um, following on from the previous question that we asked you, uh, what is the reason that you're considering changing your working pattern? Obviously, please don't include personal details, but if you could just sort of say that it's BC the partial time and you've got more caring responsibilities, it'd be really helpful to, for us to understand sort of what percentage of the civil service are sort of thinking about changing the patterns and why. In the meantime, I am going to come back to Scylla with a question. Scylla, will the money I have paid into Alpha since 2015 to 2022 be paid into our Classic, or will we get a lump sum back as Classic didn't have staff contributions? Okay, so I think this is referring back to the 2015 remedy and the outcome or the follow-on from the McLeod uh, age discrimination judgment from December 2018. So what... Um, the, the High Court, the Court of Appeal found that um, in having transitional protection as part of the 2015 reforms, we defectively discriminated on the basis of age. And the government has acknowledged that and said that will actually apply because the judgment was against the firefighters and the judges uh, will actually apply across all public sector schemes that you used that transitional protection. So the, the government went out to consult on about how to remedy and a consultation response came out in early February and there's going to be two steps. The first is that anyone who was wholly protected and is not yet in Alpha or isn't in Alpha by April 22 will move into Alpha from that date for future accrual. The final salary link will still remain for those of you who had previous links to final salary benefits. Um, the other step is to say, we'll introduce new processes to allow you as an individual to make a choice at retirement between whether you want your um, the remedy period, the benefits in the remedy period, either at all legacy. So if you were previously in classic, 15 to 22 in classic. Um, if you were um, in uh, Nuvos, 15 to 22 in Nuvos, or whether you wanted all in alpha. And that will be given to you at retirement with figures to illustrate how you do that. Um, so you will absolutely get a choice and you can decide what's best for you in terms of how that service is treated. But I think it's important, and this is a myth, so thank you for raising this, because this is a bit of a myth that's going around amongst our members, that somehow this means that people are going to get contributions back if, when, if and when they go back to their legacy schemes or accept legacy scheme benefits. So we actually equalised contributions between legacy and 
Alpha, legacy schemes and Alpha in about 2012, I think it was, 2013. Sorry, it's before my time, but around then. Andy's nodding at me, so I think I'm right. And um, that means that you've paid the same as a member, irrespective of which scheme you're in. So there is no basis to return contributions, even though that changes, even despite the, the judgment. So there will be no refund of contributions um, on that basis. Brilliant. Thanks, Silla. Myth busting there uh, in pensions, which is brilliant. Really appreciate that. Right. Next question. Oh, this is a bit of a broad question, actually. Uh, Andy, I'm going to come to you because I think you will, uh, you'll be able to cover this. Not that Silla can't. How much tax do you pay on a pension? Interesting question. <laughs> you, keep, you did the same thing yesterday when you came to me about death <laughs> and taxes. Uh, thanks, Nige. No. Um, so what do you basically, the question is, what do you pay? Uh, tax on from your pension uh it's basically as it is now it's through paye it's treated the ex exact same way so your pension is treated as earnings so if you are over the current tax threshold so when you come to retire then you will pay tax on the amount over uh, what you don't pay um from your pension is national insurance contributions so you you don't pay national insurance on your pension but you do pay tax if you are over the tax-free threshold Brilliant. Thanks, Andy. I'm sorry I keep sending tax questions your way. Um, right, I've got another question. I'm going to come to Silla on this one. Uh, transferring in external pension pots, is there an option when having worked for the civil service for 10 years plus? Okay. So if you're looking to transfer into your defined benefit scheme, which um, presumably the majority of members currently in Alpha, that would be Alpha, there is a 12 month window for a transfer in of other schemes. So it should you should be looking to transfer in within 12 months of starting employment. And that's first employment with civil service that gives you access to civil service pensions, depending on the type of pension. There is another option and it depends what you want to do with it. You may, if you have um, one of our uh, defined contribution schemes, which we mentioned earlier in the video, either the AVC or the partnership arrangement, there is no time limit for transfers to those schemes. So depending on what you want to transfer and depending on whether or not you're a member of those schemes, you could still transfer after 12 months. Um, but just think carefully uh, around any transfers you may be looking where if you're the scheme you're looking to transfer into from is a defined benefit it's a very valuable benefit to think very carefully about transferring that to dc and you'll need to take advice if you want to do that so it's um, it's possible but again a complicated route um so but broadly speaking if you're looking to transfer from um into your defined benefit or alpha pension then out of 10 years that wouldn't be possible Brilliant. Thanks, Sid. I really appreciate that. Um, right, we've got our final poll for you today. We, we love a poll over here. Um, do you think your pension has been negatively impacted by the pandemic or by reducing your working hours for another life-changing event? Um, it's a simple yes or no on that one, so we'd love to hear what you think about this one. In the meantime, Andy, I'm going to come to you with another question. Um, Andy, I joined the Civil Service Pension Scheme in 2015 and I was placed into the Classic Scheme. Because of my age, I was less than 10 years from Civil Service retirement. But would the Alpha Scheme have been a better option because I would potentially be working for fewer years at a higher salary? Uh, great question. Um, as to what would be better for that individual, it all, it all depends on that individual's own circumstance. So as um, Silla mentioned before, if you came in in 2015, and we're placing classic, it is likely you've come from a, another public sector um, where you had those protections because we were within 10 years of retirement. Um, as Scylla mentioned earlier, one of the things that will be given is it's not just individuals who were in scheme at the time, it's all individuals where, who were impacted in the public sector who would be picked up as part of the remedy and would be given an option as to what would be more beneficial for them. So options will be provided all things like that but as for that individual circumstance we can't advise of what is better until we come to retire uh, that individual comes to retire um one of the things that we're very keen on doing is not basically making you wait to retire to understand what your pension is likely to be so one of the things that we are 
developing and will be we are developing in the background is um, various different modelers which you can use to estimate what your pension is going to be at retirement taking into account both what you could get in your remedy period um, being treated as either your legacy scheme or uh, alpha things like that so you can actually see what your pension is going to be at retirement so you can like i say effectively plan brilliant thanks andy really helpful um still i'm going to come to you we've got time for a couple of uh, a couple more questions um so look, i've taken career breaks and also worked part-time would i be able to bridge the gap by making additional contributions as my circumstances have changed since i'm no longer married what happens to these additional payments in the event of a death Thanks, Nigel. So there's a couple of points to pick up. Very good reminder in terms of death benefit nominations, etc. If your circumstances have changed and you haven't recently updated your nomination, please do contact my CSP and provide an updated nomination that reflects your current circumstances. And I think um, Andy might correct me later if I'm wrong, but you can update that on the portal or instruct by the portal. Yes, he's saying yes. So if you're an active member and you use the, the portal, um, you can do you do the update through there. So that's the death benefit nominations. In terms of topping up, yes, absolutely. And I think our video refers to it. There's several routes. Um, if you have a look on the MyCSP website, um, you can look at options to build your additional pension. You can either buy uh, additional pension in your current a defined benefit pension scheme, or you can look at saving through a defined contribution scheme and an additional voluntary contribution scheme. Um, so do have a look on the website and uh, check that out. Brilliant. Thanks, Scylla. Uh, Andy, I want to come to you now. Um, Andy, once you started the process to retire and claim your pension, can you change your mind before the agreed leaving date? Uh, yes, you can. From from our perspective, you can cancel it. Um, the one thing you would do is speak to your line manager and employer around that. Um, you know, because they may have started the process for uh, bringing someone into your position, things like that. But from a pensions perspective, yes, you can. Before your pension comes into payment, you can stop it at any time. Brilliant. Thanks, Andy. Uh, I think we were we are going through questions quite quickly now. Um, Scylla, I'm going to come to you now. Um, I was in Classic Plus and have accrued a large death benefit payment. If I don't die in service, will I get any of this money back? I think this is close to the um, question that Andy answered earlier. Mm. So in Classic Plus, no, uh, when you die, the, 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 there'll be a death in service, assuming you're still in service, there'll be a death in service payment out to your uh, the beneficiary you nominate or your estate and um, any if you have a beneficiary or spouse will look obviously to pay them uh, a, a spouse or beneficiary's pe uh, pension if possible um, so do but as I said uh, on the last one do update your nominations make sure it's up to date brilliant thanks Silla. right Andy I'll come to you now how much can you pay in as a lump sum per year if you join the civil service later in life and wanted to retire early can you buy full years? You can't buy full years anymore. So this is a what may be referenced here is a old uh, facility we used to have called Added Pension, uh, which ceased in 2008 uh, and was replaced by what I like to call the Ron Seal Quick Drown Woodstain of the Civil Service Pension Scheme, Added Pension, which buys you added pension in the scheme you are a member of, as Scylla expertly described earlier. Um, there is a limit on the amount you can buy, and it's what that is, is the amount of added pension that you can realise. I, I cannot remember off the top of my head the amount. It's around about £6,000, maybe a bit more. Um, there is a lot of information on the website. We'll make sure that that is in the, the detail, um, which is provided. Well, it's clear on the website what you can buy. But the limit, you can only buy by lump sum once a year. Um, so you can make any payment out of lump sum payments, but you can only make one lump sum payment a year. So every single year going forward, you can make a lump sum payment. With the other way you can buy added pension is through periodical or monthly contributions. They can only start from the 1st of April. So usually around December, January time, we work with your employers to promote added pension and that this deadline is coming up. So it's just something to bear in mind and look out for in the um, in the near future. It'll be here before you know it. It's only about six, seven months away. 
Fantastic. Thanks, Andy. Uh, one more quick question. I know that I can nominate uh, a pension beneficiary, uh, for example, my wife. Is it possible to have split beneficiaries, i.e. my wife at 50% and children at 25% each? Yeah, sure. So with um, Classic, you can only nominate one individual or one organisation. In all the other schemes, you can nominate as many individuals as you wish or one organisation. Uh, what you can then do, you can actually specify the a percentage which goes to said party. Or if you if you don't decide to leave a percentage against an associated uh, nominee, it will be basically split evenly amongst the individuals you've nominated. Brilliant. Thanks, Andy. That's really helpful. Um, and that's all we've got time for today with the questions. We've uh, we've really enjoyed our time today. Uh, we've had lots of questions coming through. We will do our best to take as many of these away and answer them where we can on the website and we will be placing them on the website. So do keep an eye out for those. Um, where we have repeated questions, we, we can see that there's a trend there. So we'll be answering those. Um, unfortunately, we can't answer any personal questions. So if you, if you do have them and they are a burning topic, please do get in touch with the scheme administrator on the website via contact us. Um, you can contact them on the phone or you can contact them by email, but bear in mind you'll need your member number, your national insurance number and possibly some other details as well. So it's best to have a look on the website and just check first of all. I hope you found today interesting and helpful. Um, and if you've got further questions, uh, you can obviously have a look on the website. A recording of this will be made available to you within the next week to two weeks on the Scheme website as well. So if you do want to, uh, to watch back and just sort of cover over some, some areas again, you can do. Um, we'll also be sending out a short online survey post event today as well. So whether your feedback is good, bad or indifferent, it really is helpful to us to know um, whether you liked it, what you'd like changing, whether you'd like a different subject in the future or uh, a more specific subject. Um, and more importantly, whether you'd like me back as host. Um, please, if you can take the time to fill it in, would be really great for it should take you about two minutes. Uh, Civil Service Live is happening this year and we have a session on the 16th of June so if you're interested in seeing more about your pensions we'll be doing a very sort of uh, generic overview on the pensions uh, world so do come and join us for that. Uh, you can have a look if you google Civil Service Live and um, you can find the details of how to register and where we are um, on there as well. So that's it from us today. Thanks for your questions. Uh, a massive thanks to our hosts, uh, Andy and Scylla. Really do appreciate your time today. And thank you to all of those of you who have joined us today. I hope you have got something else for today. Um, and maybe you'll visit the Scheme website to find some more information out. And if we're seeing you tomorrow, I'll see you then. Thanks and goodbye.